Ever since DaVinci Resolve 19 came out and we got the new Color Slice tool, I've been using it all the time. And I think it's quickly become one of my favorite tools to actually adjust specific hues and the saturation of those. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and let me show you exactly what the Color Slice tool is and how I use it. Inside DaVinci Resolve, we have three clips. I've already graded them initially here. So this is kind of the level that I would be at with each of these clips before I had the color slice. Now, the only adjustment that I would otherwise do is probably use a little bit of curves in hue versus hue. Let's just quickly go through the color slice tool and what it is. We have density, the depth of density, saturation, saturation balance, saturation depth, and hue. Those are all the global things that we can change on the scale of the color slice here. So all these tools will adjust the entire image. You can kind of see if we adjust density, you can see what happens with the colors here. The depth of that, we can adjust the saturation that will also adjust the entire image. Now, what the color slice does different in this case is that the density is the luminance of the most saturated colors. So if we pull up our vector scope here, we can see that we have some green yellows here that are very saturated and some of the kind of red brown colors here as well. So if we adjust the density, adding density makes those parts darker. So the most saturated colors darker and removing density makes them brighter. So that's essentially what we're doing. We're taking the most saturated parts and we're making them brighter or darker. We're adjusting the luminance of those. And then if we pull it all the way up here, we make them darker and then the density depth, we can kind of adjust how the luminance affects those parts that we have affected. So like the brightest parts of the area. Okay, the saturation, if we just add a little bit of saturation here, or maybe we actually go a little bit stronger. The thing that the saturation tool does in the color slice is that it enhances the saturation, but it doesn't increase the brightness of the most saturated colors. So you kind of don't need to do luminance adjustments, but what you get here is then two sliders that can help you fine tune the saturation. So the saturation balance will fine tune the mid range of the saturation and how you want to do it there. And the saturation depth will adjust the most saturated areas and kind of help you adjust them there. So that's just the basics of these tools. Density is the brightness of the more saturated colors. And then you can adjust that in terms of how you want the depth of that. Then the saturation is saturating the image, but keeping the luminance level and not oversaturating in that way. And then you can balance the mid range of the saturation and the higher range or the most saturated areas with these. And then you have the hue, which I will probably never use, but you can just kind of take the most saturated areas and switch around the hues for this. That's not something that I think I will be using. So that's kind of the overall adjustments that you can do. Now, I don't use these that much. I kind of use the saturation a little bit and sometimes density, but what I really like with this tool is what we have down here. So. In each of these, you can see that we have a slice. And if we look at the vector scope at the same time, you can see that red represents this slice. You can see the white outlines here, this slice up here. So kind of in this area here, between the magenta and the red, it kind of takes this slice of color. So everything that's in here is what it will affect. If we're taking the highlight tool here, we can see what that means. And if you click Shift H, we can keep it on. And if we can switch between them by that, but if we keep to the red, you can kind of see if we only have the saturation or the key of what we have in here in the vector scope and so on. We can do with all of them. Now we're getting everything that's lying around the skin tone line, everything that's lying around the yellows here, the greens, the cyan, the blue and the magenta and so on. So we're only getting what we are actually selecting in these slices. And this is where you can really start fine tuning things. Now, what they added in this that you don't have in something like the Hue vs. Hue or anywhere else that you can particularly select is the skin tones here. So you can kind of adjust the key of the qualifying here. So you can kind of push that towards the left or the right to adjust a little bit what colors you're selecting in the range of the slice. And then you can adjust the hue you can adjust the density, which again is the brightness of the more saturated colors, and you can adjust the saturation itself. So this becomes really powerful. Let's say we take the skin tones now. So that's what we have selected here. And if we just zoom in a little bit, we can see that it selects the skin tones and it also selects some other things. And we can see it's losing a little bit of the hand here. So we can try and take and adjust the center here and say, okay, if we push it to the left, we're actually getting more than we had before. So we push it all the way to the left here we're getting more of the hand, which is what in this case that I want to select. 
I want her skin tones, that's what I want to boost. Now, I could be perfectly happy with how this looks already, but what we can do to enhance the look and the saturation here is just to boost the skin tones a little bit. So we can take and add a little bit of saturation and a little bit of density here to the skin tones. And if you pull this up, you can see it just added a little bit of touch to that and it just made it stand out a little bit more. Gave us a little bit more saturation, but we can make it subtle because we don't go overboard with these adjustments. So this is where I really think this becomes super, super strong. If you wanna see how the density works, we can take something like the yellows here and say, okay, we can see that affects kind of every greens here. But if we're taking the density, you can see that all the more saturated colors up here kind of become stark. And you can also see it on the waveform here. When we adjust this, you can kind of see this pulls them up if you go all the way down to one, minus one, and this pulls them down. So you can just adjust the brightness a little bit of the more saturated colors, and that way just blend them in a little bit more. We can also go and increase the saturation here. And then if we wanted to lower the brightness a little bit, then we can kind of still get something that looks nice. But be careful, it's after all saturation that we're working with in a lot of this. So don't go too overboard with what you're doing here. But for the skin tones, it's a nice way to add a little bit of saturation and make them a little bit darker in a very easy and simple way without having to do anything else. Now, let's say that the skin tones were a little bit on the wrong side. So if we go back to my balancing here, I already did the balancing, but let's just say that they are a bit too green. So if I move this down towards the greens here in the offset, you can kind of see that now it looks off. We can see on the vector scope here that they're pushed down a little bit more towards the yellow and the green here. So if we go back to the color slides and say that this is our starting point, if we go in here and we select the skin tones again, we can see we still have everything selected, so that's perfect. And then if we take the hue, look at what happens down on the vector scope here, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but if we now push this back towards the kind of red and magenta tones here, we can see how the skin tones, if we can also push it very fast, we can see exactly what we're adjusting here. But what we can do is just reset it again. We can move it back up to the skin tone line where it's supposed to be. So say that we had an image and we wanted overall everything to be more green and or that's just how it was. We can very easily just move by looking at the vector scope, move the skin tones back to where they're supposed to be. So it's a very easy way to just adjust the skin tones a little bit to get them exactly where you want to. And if you have something else that is around it that then looks a little bit too green or something, you can take, for example, the yellows and say, okay, that adjusts the hair a little bit. So let's move that a little bit towards the red and magenta as well, just to get rid of some of that. And this is before, this is after. Again, we're working with very subtle changes here, but just look at how much of a difference this made. Just adding this, we got the nice skin tones back. We kind of separating everything a little bit more as well. And we have added a little bit of saturation and density. So everything just comes together a little bit nicer. So it's not necessarily replacing the curves, but what it does is it allows you to very easily select and key out different scopes or different slices of the vector scope here, and then just adjust the saturation and density and perhaps the hue if you need to. And you can send the qualifier here. That's how simple this tool is. So let's just go through two more quick examples so you can really see what this can be used for. In this case, I would use it to enhance the skin tones as I just showed you. But here we have another example of a drone shot. And what I would do here, let's just get a little bit more real estate. What I would like to do here is, I kind of like how everything looks now. If we just take all my adjustments, turn it off, this is what it looked like when it was just Rec. 79, and this is my adjustments. And everything kind of looks fine. I kind of like how everything looks, but let's say that the water, for example, I want to put in a little bit more saturation into that just to make it stand out a little bit more. I would assume that it lies around the cyan and the blue. We can also take the qualifier here and just move around, and we can see it actually lies exactly in between the cyan and the blue here. So by taking these two scopes, we should be able to just exactly select what we want. And we can see the cyan is selecting way more of the pool than the blue is. So let's just start with the cyan. And what we can do here is that we can just improve the saturation a little bit more and maybe even the density. If we wanted it to be brighter, we can lower the density. If we wanted it to be a little bit darker, then we can just enhance the density here. I want it to be a little bit darker. You can see already there, we're going from this to this. It's subtle adjustments, but it just helps us overall get a bit more saturation and make the pool stand out a little bit more, which in this case is kind of what I'm going for as well. So with a few easy adjustments, that's what we got. We can also do the same with the blue and kind of see, okay, it's mostly attacking this range here. 
and also a little bit in the darker areas of the pool edge here. So if we add a little bit of saturation here, maybe a little bit of density, then we could take the hue here and just push it a little bit more towards the teal side here. And now you can see we don't want to go too far because we still want it to be a different shade, but we can kind of narrow it in a little bit so it fits more into the same area, the same color. So if I turn off the blue, this is what we came for. And here now we just have all the colors a little bit more balanced. We can also take the skin tones here and just adjust and improve this, the saturation a little bit and then maybe add a bit more density to make it stand out. In this case, we can go pretty far and just checking that skin tone is actually selecting what we want and it is. And we could also make the red bathing suit here stand out a little bit more, maybe add a little bit more density. And by that, we just have subtle, but very powerful adjustments. You can see we also attacked a little bit of the outer areas here with the density and the skin tones. So that's where you wanna be a little bit more careful. You can see that we are selecting a lot of other things than just the skin tones. What we could try and do is adjust the center a little bit here to see if we can select more or less. So if we just seeing what we're doing here, we can kind of weaken it a little bit by pulling it all the way to the left. And that just makes it a little bit softer of an adjustment there. So we could also add it in with a power window if we want to adjust just a specific part with the skin tones. But overall, I like to use it as just a broader tool to dial in the saturation and density of the entire image in terms of these different vector slices. So this is two different examples of what you can use it for. It is more like a normal one to just adjust the skin tones. Here we can go in and target a specific hue, a specific color. In this case, we wanted to enhance the blue tones. And then the last one is in a talking head like this, which is a video, my previous video I uploaded about notes. In this case, again, I just wanna boost my skin tones a little bit. So what I can do is just make sure that my skin tones are selected, they are, and then just enhance the saturation a little bit here. Maybe make the most saturated parts a little bit darker. And I could also add a little bit of saturation overall here and just make sure that the darkest or the the most saturated points are not too affected here. And look at how fast we can just get to a nice result. Now, one thing here is that I always have some red in my skin up here that I really don't like, so I want to get rid of that. So I could go in and take the red here from the red slice, and I kind of want to target it a little bit more, so I want to try and move it more to the magenta side, which this is affecting. The only issue I will have here is that my lips will be affected as well because they align in the red hues too. But what I can do here is just try and push it a little bit more towards the yellow and the orange tones here. I don't want to push it too far. You can see what happens then, then it becomes green. But if I just push it a little bit, I can actually get rid of some of that red in my skin up here. And I think the lips, my lips here still looks pretty fine. So overall, I think this is looking pretty good. And then we could just try and see if we can target something else. We can actually target the background quite a lot that has these brown colors that I don't really like in this scene. So I can actually just go in and desaturate that quite a lot. And that makes me stand out from the background as well. In this case, I don't have any other lights or anything set up. So that could be a way to just take away a little bit of focus of the background and just center the attention around me. So with that, we just gotten a lot more saturation and depth into my skin. And it just looks, this didn't necessarily look bad if you're just looking at it, but this just looks a lot better. And if you wanna tweak it a slight bit more, we could take the cyan here and just boost my hat a little bit here, maybe make it a little bit brighter by lowering the density and just boosting the saturation. And now the hat also stands out a little bit more. That is essentially the color slice tool. It's saturation and it's brightness of the most saturated parts. That's mainly what you're adjusting when you're adjusting the density and the saturation. And it's a really strong tool to fine tune things. I wouldn't use it necessarily to just go all in and color grade my entire clip, but to fine tune everything, and in this case, I also have a lot added before, so that does most of the work, but I still will have tweaks that I need to do, and the color slice just makes it immensely easier than going into the hue versus hue, targeting and selecting specific hues to adjust those the way I want, to go into the saturation then and boost or lower the saturation of different hues, and go into the luminance and then kind of playing around with that as well. Now the color slice is my main tool to adjust the saturation and fine tune the different hues. 
and then I will go into the Q versus U if I have broader, larger things I need to do, which is usually what I've baked into my lots in the first place. So that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions below, any other use cases you want to see me do with the color slicing tool, and I'm happy to look into that as well. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, take care.